Parametric equations are extremely helpful in quite a number of real life applications in physics, in engineering, and in, t in tons of other fields as well. And in this video, we just want to unpack just kind of the basics of parametric equations and we'll, we'll unpack some of the, the deeper details about parametric equations in some of the later videos. All right, so first of all, let's motivate why we would want to even talk about parametric equations. Like, what, what are they used for? Why, why do we need to study these guys? When you think about equations, we've, we've studied equations for a long time. We can graph linear equations and quadratic equations, and we're, we're very comfortable dealing with equations. But it turns out there's one small uh, problem with the way we've been uh, dealing with equations. Let, let's look at an example here. Uh, in rectangular form, that's the x, y form way of writing uh, an equation where you just have two variables, an x and a y. Uh, you have a, an equation like this, and the equation has a graph. Like this, for example, this guy uh, is a quadratic equation, so this graph is a parabola. And let's just say this is what the, the graph of the parabola looks like, for example. Okay, so w when you think about this graph here, first thing you notice is that it's got a lot of x, y points on it. That's what makes up the parabola. These are all the points x, comma, y that make the equation true, right? That make negative x squared plus 4x plus 10 really equal to the y value. And if, it, uh, if the, you plug the x and the y in and it's equal, then it gets on the graph. If you try an x, y value that makes this equation not true, then it's not on the graph. But the thing I want to emphasize is that there's no order to these. We don't have to draw these left to right or right to left. They're just, bam, they're just all on the graph all, all at once. There's no, nothing that says this point has to be drawn before this point or whatnot. Okay, so, so one way we could say that is that this tells where an object has been. If this is modeling maybe the movement or the position of an object through space, it'll tell where it's been, but it will not be able to tell when it's been there, right? Because again, there's no order to these points. This is not oriented left to right versus right to left or anything like that. It's just a collection of points. If you look back at the the formal definition of a quadratic equation or any equation is the set of all points that make the equation true. That's how we get the graphs of equations. But for so many real life applications, we need to know not only when it's been at a point, and not only what point it's been at, but also when it's been at that point. Think of, man, think of all the applications like that, like projectile motion is probably the biggest one I can think of off the top of my head. You know, you have a projectile. I don't just want to know what path it took. I want to know where it is at, after one second and what location it's at after two seconds and so on and so forth. And that's what parametric equations help with. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, in this equation that has X's and Y's currently, we're going to introduce a third variable uh, almost exclusively, uh, we, we label this third variable T. Um, T is often introduced to represent time. And so that's by far and away the most common letter that you'll see when you're talking about parametric equations. All right, and what else we'll do is we'll define the X and the Y independently of one another in terms of time. So the x will be a function of time and the y value will be a function of time. So when you pick a time, let's say two seconds, you would plug two into f and you would plug two into g and that would give you an x, y location. And then you change time to be three seconds. You would get a, a different x, y location. And so as time changes, you sketch out this curve that's oriented because time always increases from zero seconds on. And T uh, usually is called the parameter. T is usually called the parameter. Okay, here's what a quick graph of this guy would look like. Now, if you just put uh, a graph up here, notice this doesn't have an orientation. This would be what it would look like, uh, an equation would look like in rectangular form. But if this was written in our parametric form, where the X and Y are independently functions of T, then it's gonna have what's known as an orientation. It'll either be oriented from the left to the right, 
or it could very well be from the right to the left, depending on the parametrization that you have for your uh, parametric equations. And so what happens is you'll have like t equals zero, for example, will be right here, and then t equals one, then t equals two, then t equals three, four, and five, and you'll notice you're at different x, y locations based off of the time, and based off of the, of the time is the important part. Because as we can see, the x and the y are, are influenced by the time. Okay, um, now the uh, obviously time marches forward, and so that's what's giving the direction of these arrows. You go from t equals 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So in this example, since the graph is kind of moving this way, the orientation, these little arrows, are drawn in this direction. If it went in the opposite direction, we'd reverse those arrows. All right, now there's a lot we have to talk about as far as parametric equations go. We need to know how to graph parametric curves. We even need to know calculus things like, you know, given a point on a parametric curve, how do you find a slope at a given point? Because these aren't true functions that we can take the derivative of anymore. So we have a lot of questions and we'll unpack a lot of those things in the upcoming video. But hopefully for now, this will suffice as just a light introduction to parametric equations.